Hi, this is Amy from Upstart University. We've been learning a lot about crops at Upstart U lately, how to grow them, how to sell them, but sometimes the incredibly interesting history of our crops falls through the cracks. So today, we're gonna take a brief tour of an herb that you might not know about, fennel. Now, fennel is a perennial herb in the carrot family, and if you've ever had fennel, you've probably noticed the familiar taste of licorice or anise. The greens are edible, but most people buy the fennel for its bulb instead. It's mild, it goes really well with chicken or fish, and my personal favorite is almost anything with a cream sauce, like creamy potato fennel soup. The stalk is good raw as an addition to salads, and the lacy leaves are great as a garnish. In Italy, it's not uncommon to see it served with figs and mozzarella, or roasted with a bit of parmesan. People have also used fennel in juices or smoothies. Historically, fennel has been used as a solution to digestive ailments, and in India, a few fennel seeds may be taken after meals. Not uncommon. The Roman author and philosopher Pliny thought that serpents ate it when they shed their skin and it made their eyesight better. Having not spent that much time around snakes, I don't know if that's true, but Henry Wadsworth Longfellow seemed to agree with Pliny because he wrote about it in his poems, at least one of them. The most common type of fennel grown is Florence fennel. Its origin is in the Mediterranean area, but now fennel is grown across the world from India to France to Russia. The history of fennel is marked by one pretty important battle. The results of the Battle of Marathon carried its name, its Greek name, Maratho, into the everyday life of lots of people like you and me. The Greek word for fennel is maratho, as in marathon. That word sounds familiar to you because of the Battle of Marathon, which was named after fennel because it was fought in fields of fennel, and the event marathon was named after that battle. So the story of the Battle of Marathon happens in the year 490 BC. The Persians have just dumped 20,000 troops north of Athens because Greece helped when the Ionians revolted against Persia, and the Persians all mad about it. So the Athens send out 10,000 civilian troops and they're vastly outnumbered. Long story short, the Athenians win because of this crazy guy with a plan named Miltiades. Over half of the Persians get away though, and they hightail it back to Athens, which they figure is now guarded. But the Athenians march quickly back to Athens in time to meet them. And after some fighting, they fight the Persians again. And again, they're outnumbered, and again, they beat the Persians. Anyway, it's an epic story that you should definitely look up. So. That's how fennel got connected to a Greek-Persian battle. But what about the marathon race? Well, before the battle, Athens sends a messenger to nearby Sparta, another Greek state. The messenger's name was Pheidippides. And accounts differ on whether or not he was a trained runner, but regardless, his two-day journey covering 150 miles is pretty remarkable. And the Spartans, they never came. They were busy having a religious festival. Honestly, I think that's a bad excuse to let your neighbors die. But anyway, if they had come, maybe we, we wouldn't have the same epic underdog story that we do today. And Pheidippides' incredible run might not have found the spotlight remaining in our vocabulary as marathon for millennia. So that's how a racing event got named after delicious sweet herb. Maybe you can wow your farmer's market customers with your knowledge of fennel. We hope so. If you want to learn more about how to grow fennel and other hydroponic and aquaponics crops, try out Upstart U. We just are putting the finishing touches on the crops course there, and we'd love to have you join us. As always, leave comments, ideas, and questions in the comments below.